Back in the early 1980s, I was friends with Mr. L.D. Reeves, who owned Reeves Furniture Company here in Waverly Hall. Uh, his business was known as Reeves Cabinet Shop, and they were furniture manufacturers. And Mr. Reeves had his business in the old Pitts Mercantile Building. Well, Mr. Reeves told me one day that he knew uh, where up above the uh, front windows of the building there was a, a loft up there, and that he had put a lot of Mr. Pitt's old papers up there from the days of the mercantile business. Anyway, Mr. Reeves told me that uh, he cleaned out the old bank vault and a lot of the paperwork that Mr. Pitts had had been uh, moved up into that loft. And he told me, he says, you know, if you want to climb up here and get it down, you're welcome to, to any of it you might want. Well, all the paperwork that was on top had pretty much turned to dust. It was crumbled up and uh, but the ones on the bottom, some of them were still in boxes, some of them were still strung up on str string. Uh, Mr. Pitts, in his day, saved every scrap of paper that came into that store. If he spent a penny with anyone, he expected a receipt for that penny. And when the receipt came to the store, he would flip it over and use the back side of it to write notes to anyone in the store that he needed to communicate with because he had, at the time, 17 clerks in the store he had a cotton warehouse in the back. He had a cotton gin next door. He had the, the grist mill that ground corn into flour and uh, into, into meal, excuse me. Uh, then he had uh, the lumber yard and, and he had uh, just untold numbers of, of warehouse workers. But the way to communicate back then was to write on little slips of paper. And he did not believe in buying tablets. He, he used scraps of paper. So all these little scraps of paper were saved but some of them, like these, for instance, were still intact. He would, uh, he would take an envelope like this and cut it all the way around and use the envelope. But this one had never been intact, it's still intact, had never been cut. And this one was addressed to Mr. George Archie Byrd, Waverly Hall, Georgia, and still had the contents. And this being where Mr. George Archie Byrd sold 18 bales of cotton. Now this would have been cotton that was grown right here on this place. If you look out that window there, you can see out across what had been the Bird Plantation. Mr. George Archie Bird lived right over there. His brother, James Henry, lived here. But George Archie looked after all that farm that went all the way around this place. And I've, I've been told that it was originally, what, three or 400 acres here originally? Yeah. And that was, that was just what was connected to this place. That was not uh, counting land that they owned separate, like down at uh, Asahatchee and over near Catala and, and you know, out toward Hamilton. They owned lots of other tracts of land. I know on this land, in, or this road in particular, uh, George Archie Bird owned from right over there where the, the horses are now. Uh -huh. um, and at one time he owned apparently all the way down to the Asahatchee Creek in, in various parts. I don't know if it was not broken up or not, but which is a good two miles down the, down the road from it, here. It is. Uh, I know that Mr. Joe Story wound up owning all of the Pitts farm on the opposite side of the road, and he owned all of the bird farm later on this side of the road, all except for this uh, little uh, bit of acreage right here that your house is on. Uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Story owned everything around it at, at one point. And it had all been the bird place over here on this side of the road. Uh, but anyway, these 18 bales of cotton would have been grown right here. And when you look at this, it shows what uh, each bale weighed. And they weighed everything from, or anything from 370 pounds up to 602 pounds. These are the private marks on here. I believe that this may be the, the initials of the person who uh, weighed the cotton maybe, I'm not certain about that. But, uh, and then the, each bale was given a number. And of course this is the weight. And then right here it says, we have sold this at th seven and three eighths except for one bale was seven. And I'm thinking that that's seven and three eighths cents a pound and one bale brought seven cents a pound. If you think uh, about 18 bales of cotton and each one weighing what this uh, amounts to. Uh, if you can imagine a handful of cotton, what that weighs, uh, it weighs literally nothing. Uh, it, 
by the time you pick enough cotton, if you pick this entire room full of cotton and you compressed it all into a little square, you could hold it in the palm of your hand and it probably wouldn't weigh seven ounces. You can imagine how much it takes to weigh a pound. And if you can imagine how much it takes to weigh 602 pounds, uh, that, that would be a lot of cotton. And we're not talking about the kind of cotton that they grow nowadays where they fertilize the land and cotton stalks grow head high and they run over it with a combine and, and, and collect it and leave half of it scattered about the field. This was cotton that was low growing. Uh, it was uh, hand picked and that, that took a lot of cotton to weigh that much. But anyway, those 18 pounds, I mean, excuse me, 18 bales, it doesn't say how much they brought, but there is another. This one, this one was dated 1902. And these are dated a little earlier, I believe. Let's see, that is a deposit slip. And then this one, this one is also from the same company. This is from Blanchard Humber and Company in Columbus on the Chattahoochee River to George Archie Bird, G.A. Bird Esquire, Waverly Hall, Georgia. Dear sir, we have deposited proceeds of 13 bales of cotton in the Third National Bank to credit of I.H. Pitts and Son. Your directions were for six only, but we suppose that you are to take the same direction. Yours truly, Blanchard Humber and Company. And that was September the 1st, no, excuse me, September 13th, 1900. So this, uh, this time he sold 13 bales of cotton. And here's the current market weight, uh, uh, current market price. Uh, market price at the time, it says firm. Uh, good, good middle, good middling is, was 10 and 7 eighths. Strict middling was 10 and three quarter. Middling was 10 and five eighths. Low middling was 10 and a half. And good, oh, good order was 10 and a quarter. Uh, those were the different grades of cotton there. But uh, so in 1900, cotton was bringing 10 cents a pound. And then by 1902, it was seven and some odd cents uh, a pound. But anyway, he saw, you can see where Mr. Bird did a lot of scribbling on the back of this, figuring uh, the amount that was put in the bank for those 13 bales of cotton. And here's the deposit slip from the Third National Bank, September the 15th of 1900. They made this account uh, deposit out to I.H. Pitts and Son, $248.46. That was a lot of work a lot of cotton to amount to $248.46. Of course, that was a lot of money then. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we think about uh, the cotton and sometimes you think, oh, these folks made a fortune, but that was, that was a good bit of money. But, you know, the broad scope of things, it was not a lot of money for, for what all they had to put into that. Uh, and also, I'm, you know, you kind of wonder, I asked Miss Margaret Pitts one time about this, and she said that Mr. Bird and her father were partners at one time in the cotton buying business, but they deposited all of this in Mr. Pitts' account, and I thought it was kind of strange that they said it's all going the same direction. So, I, you know, you got to wonder, did Mr. Bird buy some land from Mr. Pitts and maybe this was his way of paying Mr. Pitts off was through this uh, sale of these bales. I, I really don't know. But anyway, uh, another interesting piece of bird farm history. Now, um, these were, you, you touched on this briefly that George Archie Bird and Mr. Pitts had gone into the cotton buying business together yes. um, because of uh, his brother, George Archie's brother, James Henry Bird, who built this house, and he would have been technically a competitor 
of Mr. Pitts, is that correct? They were competitors of Mr. Pitts at one point. Uh, the Bird Brothers owned their own cotton gin here. It was on the corner of McCullough Drive and Story Drive, where the little brick house is that Mr. Beverly Reeves owned. That was where the Pitts cotton, excuse me, the, uh, the Bird cotton gin was located. And the Birds had a cotton warehouse that was underneath the water tank that burned mm, probably in the mid or early 1980s. Uh, we, we do have good pictures of that, but we don't have any pictures of the, of the cotton gin. Uh, but the Birds and the Pitts were at one point strict competitors with one another. And, uh, but this was in the early 1900s that Mr. Bird, or Mr. George Archie was apparently doing some kind of business with Mr. Pitts in the cotton business. So, uh, Miss Margaret Pitts was Mr. Will Pitts' daughter. She lived to be 104. And when I interviewed her about that, she just said that she remembered it as a young girl that Mr. Archie and her papa did business together in cotton. So, there's what evidence of that that is left.